When we talk about assurance, most people immediately think audit, and the thinking stops there. But audit, although an important assurance service, is only one specialised subset of assurance. Financial statement audits relate to the financial statements and whether or not it is presented fairly and is free from material errors and misstatements. Assurance engagements can extend way beyond just financial data and can include non-financial information, such as internal controls, compliance with regulations, governance and even corporate social responsibility issues. The elements of assurance engagements are the same, irrespective of whether you are performing a financial statement audit or providing assurance over non-financial information. The five elements of an insurance engagement include a three-party relationship, subject matter information, that is, information or data that is actually going to be measured and upon which the assurance opinion will relate to, suitable criteria, which refers to the standards or benchmark that will be used to evaluate the information, sufficient appropriate evidence, which relates to the methodology for the collection of enough evidence to support the final opinion. And finally, the written assurance report, which includes the opinion about the subject matter information and is expressed as either a reasonable or limited assurance opinion. A reasonable assurance opinion is a high level of assurance and is expressed in a positive manner, while a limited assurance opinion is a lower level of assurance and is expressed in a negative manner. As with financial statement audits, assurance practitioners are expected to maintain independence and apply professional judgment. Independence is arguably the cornerstone of the assurance profession. Users of the assurance report cannot place reliance on the assurance opinion if the assurance practitioner's independence of mind and appearance is in any way impaired. Not only is this required by the Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants, but it is also legislated by law. For example, the Corporations Act requires independence and disclosures relating to independence for financial statement audits. There is also the argument that the greater the independence of the assurance practitioner, the greater the quality of the assurance engagement. Professional judgment is arguably one of the attributes of a profession that differentiates professionals from non-professionals. Before the engagement has even begun, the assurance practitioner would be required to make professional judgments about whether or not he or she has the relevant knowledge, skill, competence, experience and resources to accept the engagement. This would continue until the very end when the assurance practitioner has to evaluate the evidence gathered and decide on the appropriate assurance opinion. To recap, there are many overlaps between a financial statement audit and other assurance engagements. And this is because an audit is a specialised subset of assurance engagements.